morning to you. Thanks for clicking on to the latest edition of Long Range Discussion for the 6th of February. And uh, it's very, very foggy. It's been foggy, in fact, all day across many parts of, uh, of not only here in Scotland, but across the British Isles. Cold ground, damp ground, and of course we've got plenty of snow cover across, uh, you know, parts of uh, southern Scotland. Uh, I was down in, when I was doing my deliveries this morning, uh, I encountered uh, about, I would say, about two inches of snow down in Moffat and Dumfries and Galloway, and up over the higher ground of the southern uplands. It was a, a snowy but very foggy scene. And uh, also we've seen some clear skies as well down in uh, North Yorkshire. We've seen temperatures down to uh, tw down towards minus nine this morning. But the cold air remains so persistent across the majority of Europe. We have got, as you can see here, uh, the the trough over the western half of the continent, and the core of the cold remains centered generally over. You know, you've got the the the, the strongest cold up here across uh, northern Scandinavia, but we've also got a secondary core sitting over Germany, and this morning we've seen temperatures down to minus twenty nine point one. Uh, I, I, I believe it was. Um, uh, Usdom uh, Island on I don't know if that's the right pronunciation, uh, but it was an island actually uh, in the Baltic Sea that dropped to minus twenty one twenty nine point one. That in fact was actually the coldest temperature in uh, in twenty five years in Germany. Now I believe there was a, there was minus twenty in Berlin this morning, the the capital, and that was the coldest in twenty five years. So we're talking about significant cold still across parts of Europe, despite the fact that this cold wave has been going on now for seven to ten days but certainly we're looking at significant uh, problems we've seen uh, uh, basically gridlock in the a1 uh, through yorkshire this morning because of significant icing conditions so winter yes is back now of course it isn't back for many other parts of british isles we'll, we'll still see a lack of snowfall despite temperatures perhaps at night time below freezing many parts of Ireland as well remains quite mild. We've got that mild southwesterly flow and unfortunately folks, for you folks in Ireland, I know you're complaining to me, just be patient. I do believe still that by around mid-February we're going to be seeing an increase in colder weather. But certainly the cold remains uh, literally just over the other side of the North Sea. Yes, we see colder weather. Yes, we have plenty of snowfall and our snow cover, should I say, across many parts of England. But certainly the majority of that truly cold air remains literally just a couple of hundred miles on the other side of the North Sea. We've seen temperatures down to minus 10 once again in Amsterdam and single digits in Fahrenheit. That's down into the minus 12 to minus you know, 15 Celsius range in eastern parts of uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. And of course, the core of that cold over Germany. But we remain cold, and I'm very concerned, folks, about this uh, feature right here uh, sitting over, basically, where, where Asia meets uh, Europe. And I'm very concerned as well for Moscow itself. This large cut-off area of low pressure, which is, uh, contains a... a, a, a a high octane, brutally cold air. I can't emphasize enough how cold this little pocket of air is. And it, the models continue to want to show this thing drift west, southwest in the coming days. Now you notice here the cold, the cold of course, remaining anchored over western and central parts of Europe. An area of low pressure forming again over the central Mediterranean Sea. We're going to be seeing uh, heavy thunderstorms inland. And once the, the moisture gets pushed up and into uh, the, the cold air over Europe, we're talking about significant heavy snowfall across even parts of northern Greece, up into uh, the, the Balkan nations and into uh, Bulgaria and Romania as well, perhaps extending further north up into the Ukraine and, and um and Russia as well. But certainly, folks, it remains cold, and it will remain cold for the foreseeable future, unfortunately. But keep your eye on this feature here. Uh, folks in Moscow really have to pay attention to this little feature. I'm concerned that if you think it's been cold now, this feature, if it was to cross over you, would be uh, significantly colder than anything you've seen in many years, unfortunately. Minus uh, 30 Celsius, uh, or should I say, minus 30 in Fahrenheit 
would be uh, quite possible with this feature. But look at how deep the trough is, basically incorporating a region all over Europe and deep into the northern half of Africa. Very strong jet stream uh, sweeping across the Sahara Desert. But you notice that the feature, like I, I keep saying to you, it's going to actually pull and, and, and pinwheel very uh, significant Siberian air into uh, into Europe as well. But certainly the, the models are fluctuating a wee bit in the, in the significance of the cold. You notice a little uh, upper level low. It's, uh, basically, it's pulling in that cold air into the Baltic, uh, the Baltic nations and, and the, the severe cold remains. Now, the, the ECMWF shows as if it's trying to get some uh, moderation in temperatures uh, across both the UK as well as uh, over France, a cold pocket over Spain. I'm not convinced that it's going to be that mild uh, on Thursday over France. I, I just think there's too much cold air around. Let's look at uh, Friday. You notice the intensification of this upper level cutoff low brutally cold air folks look at the the wee um bullseye of of savage cold dangerous cold over this part of eastern uh, europe notice here as well the cold air trying to push its way back across central portions of europe through uh, uh, kind of southern germany up over the the alpine uh, nations as well could we be looking at the coldest temperatures yet in parts of uh, austria and switzerland yes the mild remains fairly mild across the british isles but we'll wait and see about that i'm really not convinced that it's going to be just quite as mild notice here a little uh, uh, the upper low that was once over the baltic nation sweeped down into the trough into the base of the trough very cool weather uh, for italy as well into the, the the alpine nations could we be seeing more increase in snowfall notice here as well the continuing deepening and uh, you know growing uh, intensification of the cold within this that folks is a dangerous upper level feature here on the map really needs to be uh, looked at very carefully across russia into the ukraine as well a, a significant feature a dangerous one as well at that but let's have a look through the rest of the sequence here folks and you notice here that the cold air remains anchored in place notice the feature starting to drift more towards the north and wednesday uh, you can see here if it will change uh, the computer is running quite slow, unfortunately. I'm, I apologise for that. I, I tell you what, I'll end it at that. But certainly, uh, it's worth pointing out, folks, that the winter is nowhere near done yet, even across the British Isles and Ireland. I continue to ask you, folks, to not worry. It showed up, but I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, please stop asking me about wh whether we're going to see snow in any given area, folks. I really don't have a clue at the moment. The pattern like i believe it will evolve from about the 15th of february onwards a much colder pattern y you would t take that as an increase in in likelihood for snowfall but any given area folks I, it's impossible for me to say at the moment whether you in your backyard is going to see snowfall but continue to keep checking back to my write-ups i'll try and keep you up to date as much as possible hope you have a terrific evening folks Bye bye